Hello dude. So far we understand the basics of entity relationship model. Uh, now, uh, now in this lecture we will go through the basic notations which is used to draw a entity relationship diagram. Okay. So let's start quickly. And okay. So the first thing we understood in this chapter was entity. Okay. So what is entity? Well, the basic object having independent existence okay so we in represent entity from this rectangle entity okay the next one is another kind of entity which is represented by double rectangle okay so this is weak entity entity well, I know this is a new term for you. Uh, we have a separate lecture on this weak entity. So we will be covering what it is. Just remember the symbol for now. Okay. Now, the next one we have is a diamond symbol, which represents relationship. Relationship type. Well, this is also type. I hope by now you understand what is entity and what is entity type. Okay. Similarly, we have something which is represented by double diamond. So what would it would be? Weak relationship, is it? It is called identifying relationship. relationship well this identifying relationship has some relation i mean has some uh, something to do with this weak entity and everything i will be explaining in the weak entity lecture well another one we have studied is attribute attribute so how do we represent attribute we represent attribute with a ellipse okay sometimes you will see the ellipse having some attribute which is underlined okay for example id something like this the attribute will be underlined so it means this is a key attribute okay another one you will see is eclipse ellipse underlined but but with dotted line okay so this is basically uh, yes partial key partial key okay this is again a new term we will understand it later now next you will understand uh, next we have something represented by double ellipse again double so this is multi-valued attribute multi-valued attribute this we know already right now you will see that attribute having multiple branches like this okay like this okay so this is composite attribute okay composite attribute we know already right okay again we have something represented by dashed ellipse okay so this is derived attribute derived attribute well so now we also have something like some uh, restriction or constraints imposed over the ER diagram that also we have to represent in our ER diagram right for example uh, a student can take multiple course right so this is also a I mean we have some 
this we call cardinality ratio which is our next lecture so this we represent by entity entity here there will be a relationship okay in between and here the relationship we write as 1 is to n so if this is e1 this is e2 so e1 is to e2 is 1 is to n okay so depending upon the relationship we can say entity e1 can participate in n instance of entity e2 okay so this is the participation ratio you can say okay or cardinality ratio another one is uh, quite similar not similar but yes in case of entity relationship only we have entity we have relationship okay so it says relationship between entity e1 and e2 but you may get double line here okay so this is this double line is called total participation total participation okay so this is also our uh, concern in next few lectures so the terms which we haven't study studied yet we will be covering in the next two three lectures so for now you have to remember how do we represent each of the uh, basic in, basic things in uh, our er diagram okay so in the next lecture i'll be explaining the things like uh, cardinality ratio and the participation constraint okay so see you in the next lecture for now this was just a, a notation which you have to remember so thanks for watching